I guess the main news is the really exciting news from Pfizer and BioNTech that their vaccine from the interim analysis of their phase three clinical trial demonstrated an efficacy of 90%, which is really exciting news. So, so that means nine out of 10 people given that vaccine potentially won't go on to get infected if exposed to the virus. So it's early days and we need to wait for the official publication in the peer reviewed journal and analysis uh, in more detail of the safety data as, as well as the other endpoints. But in terms of that endpoint, uh, at this point in time, that's really encouraging news. And not only for this vaccine, but I guess for all vaccines that we can administer something that gives us such good protection. I think we can be encouraged for all the vaccines out there at the moment. Look, I, I think while it's encouraging for all vaccines that we've seen such a good protective response, I, I mean, in the end, we need to wait for robust phase three data to be properly analysed before we can be confident any vaccine um, generates a, a response that's sufficient. I think this does give us some optimism that we can, you know, potentially extrapolate some of this positivity to the others. But, you know, again, until it's proven in the clinical trials, we can't get ahead of ourselves. I mean, the mRNA platform is fairly novel and fairly unique. Um, but ultimately, you know, we've established uh, protective immunity or, you know, really close to protective immunity from a vaccine that I, I think should give optimism to all of those vaccine manufacturers out there that, you know, hopefully whilst you know, maybe 90% is still um, exceptional and the others, I'm sure, um, won't all get 90%, but I think we can certainly be encouraged. We obviously want to vaccinate the whole world and we haven't seen a lot of subgroup analysis. It's been mentioned that there is uh, you know, a diverse uh, ethnic populations included in this study. Um, so, you know, that's been represented. But again, until we see all that in the data, and as you say, we need to see how this pans out in elderly, in young people, in immune compromised, people with other comorbidities, for example. And I think that's what underpins the fact that we, we shouldn't stop developing all the other vaccines progressing through clinical trials, because it's very likely we're going to need a, a host of strategies. And some of these may well be complementary in combination, for example, which will come out, you know, down the track a little bit more. So, you know, we're going to need as many vaccines as we can still to get to, to get through this. But I think every vaccine can now have a slightly greater sense of optimism, given that we have seen immunity generated that appears protective in the majority of people from a vaccine for this pathogen. You know, the, the main uh, drawback with the, the Pfizer vaccine at the moment is the, the requirement for the minus 70 or minus 80 storage. I don't think that's a deal breaker because obviously, you know, there's, there's 43 and a half thousand people who've been vaccinated in clinical trials. So that, that uh, extreme cold chain has been maintained for those people. So I think that there's ways we can do it.